Hi everybody, it's Tatiana and this is Kindred by Octavia Butler as well as the graphic novel adaptation of Kindred by Octavia Butler. I reread the source material. I wanted the actual source material in my head because the graphic novel adaptation is about a hundred pages shorter than what the original novel was and so I knew that there was going to be parts of the story that were um, not put in words in the graphic novel and so I wanted to have all of that before I went into reading this so that I had what it was supposed to be versus what has been done. So brief synopsis of Kindred. It is the story of Dana Franklin and she is brought into the situation where she is traveling through time to save this white boy named Rufus. Dana is black, Rufus is white, and it's the story of her dealing with the time travel and the effects on her. The more she goes or more frequently she goes, the longer her trips in the past become and the more dangerous they become because she's being transported in time to pre-Civil War South U.S. So she's and this this takes place um or her time is 1976. So it's not this time, but it's still more modern, more liberated, more free than 1815 Southern US. So she's having to deal with that as well as the strain and things that it puts on her life and her relationship uh, with her husband, her new husband, they've only been married for a few months. She's 26 years old when this starts happening. And the story goes on from there. It is very harrowing. Um, I don't want to give much away in the way of spoilers. The first time I read this, I literally stood in Barnes & Noble in Charlotte, North Carolina, and read the prologue. I'm going to read you just a bit of that. It's not going to be a lot, but I don't. I want to put you in the tone of the novel without giving spoilers, because once I put this down, everything else from that point forward, when I get to talking about the graphic novel, is going to be heavy on the spoiler side. So I want to give you this information. If you have not read the novel, if you're thinking about reading either the novel or the graphic novel, and you haven't read the source material, I want to give you this opportunity before I get into spoilers. So this is part of what I read in Barnes & Noble. I lost an arm on my last trip home. My left arm. And I lost about a year of my life and much of the comfort and security I had not valued until it was gone. When the police released Kevin, he came to the hospital and stayed with me so that I would know I hadn't lost him too. But before he could come to me, I had to convince the police that he did not belong in jail. That took time. The police were shadows who appeared intermittently at my bedside to ask me questions I had to struggle to understand. How did you hurt your arm, they asked. Who hurt you? My attention was captured by the word they used, hurt, as though I'd scratched my arm. Didn't they think I knew it was gone? Accident, I heard myself whisper. It was an accident. They began asking me about Kevin. Their words seemed to blur together at first, and I paid little attention. After a while, though, I replayed them and suddenly realized that these men were trying to blame Kevin for hurting my arm. No, I shook my head weakly against the pillow. Not Kevin. Is he here? Can I see him? Who then, they persisted. I tried to think through the drugs, through the distant pain, but there was no honest explanation I could give them. None they would believe. Okay, spoilers from this point out, people. What I will say about this graphic novel is it was a very good attempt. One of the things that I knew from the jump as soon as I heard that they were doing a graphic novel was that you were going to learn that Kevin, Dana's husband, is white before you, it, before you actually learn it in the book because it shows you at the very beginning. And the, it starts off with everything looking very promising. This is the prologue. That's what's left of the prologue, and that's Dana in the hospital bed with her left arm amputated. Things that I noticed in the present um, time versus the time when she goes back to the 1800s is a difference in color, which was a little 
it took a little getting used to because the present time is in sepia tones where the 1800s is in color, full color. And a lot of work to get detail into the story or into the pictures to kind of to translate to you what is going on that you get in the story that you don't get because they had to adapt it for the sake of the novel. I feel like I just kind of fluttered through that. Okay. My main issue with this graphic novel is that it is not as graphic as it could have been and as I believe it should have been. The slave narrative is not new. The brutality of slavery is not something that is new to the general public of anyone, whether you live in the U.S. or not. It's not new news. I do believe that this was very watered down in the brutality that not only Dana faces, but that the slaves face. Dana's first encounter when she comes to save Rufus, she comes into contact within the first few hours of her second visit with the harsh brutality of slavery and she even comments on it in the book about how and in the graphic novel about how she'd seen it in stories and she she read about it in stories and she's seen it in movies but she hadn't heard the cries of the slave hadn't smelt the blood and the fear and the sweat and all of those with the sounds of the whip and how different it was from seeing it in real life versus seeing it filtered through a televised image and this is in the 70s that was the perfect opportunity for the artist to make the bruises and the welts and the gashes on the back of the slave who was being beat as brutal as we know it can be like it, it, it it's like it's glossed over and this is how it's done and i hope you could see that well but it could it could have been it should have been in much more detail there's also an instance um later on in the story when alice runs away with her husband and uh, Rufus goes to buy her and comes, brings her back, and it it talks in the novel about how brutal, um, how battered she was, how the dogs there, like the dogs basically just chewed on her. They just let the dogs have at her, like they hadn't had anything to eat. That's what they used the bloodhounds for. And there was this huge gash that was taken out of her thigh. We never see that. How bad she is supposed to look is discussed in the graphic novel. But maybe I'm looking for a little too, uh, you know, a little too much. I'm expecting it to be a little harsher than it should be. But at this day and age, with what we know of the slave narrative, there was no reason to hide that. When Dana comes, um, the first time she's whipped, she comes back home and, you know, Kevin is stuck there because he can't get to her in time when she fades back out and comes home and the first thing that she has to figure out that she can't do is take her shirt off because the shirt has been basically whipped into the scars on her back and that is not part of the graphic novel story at, at all and I think that that is so poignant and just it was great that Octavia Butler put that out there as part of Dana's experience and how inept even with everything that she'd read and what she knew about the slave narrative and history at that point how inept she was to not only experience it even from the outside looking in but to deal with it as someone who's expected to act like a slave even though she isn't and the point when she gets kicked in the mouth and she loses a couple of teeth like right to the side of her two front teeth and not there. She has full teeth. There's also a part in the novel where Alice is running away with Isaac, or the part in the novel, where Alice is running away with Isaac, and Alice has on earrings. The whole thing of even Alice being a free woman, 18, I guess 19 or 20-something at this point, free woman Alice with the dead mother, married to a slave, running on the run, having earrings in her ear seemed exceptionally frivolous to me. And like a detail that didn't need to be paid attention to. Also, when the graphic novel begins, there's great care that is taken into some of the wordiness of the conversations that Dana and Kevin have. 
one of the things I thought that this was not going to have was Kevin and Dana's story of how they got together. I thought that that was going to be glossed over um, simply for the sake of the graphic novel, but it was not. And there's great care that's taken into explaining the wordiness of their, of their get-together and how they came to be with each other. This is it. Like, all of the time that's taken into getting all of that part of the story there and how the artist and um and adapter yeah felt that that was very important to include in the story okay my memory card filled up apparently i'm doing a lot of talking today um but with all of that care that was taken into the frames of their background story as the gra as the novel progresses it becomes choppy and there's a disconnect that happens between some frames where the story moves from one section to the next and it's like wait there's no cut to commercial I needed a better segue <laughs> my thought is that happened because they realized that they were getting closer to the end of the graphic novel that they were running out of pages <laughs> that they had to utilize to give the story and I think that I mean there's more in Dana's encounters with Rufus and the slaves as the story progresses that are more interesting to me to see in this format than Dana and Kevin getting to know each other and the whole bringing Buzz into the story who's like such a minor character in the book he could have been done without yet instead of doing without Buzz not being drunk and making fun of Dana and Kevin getting together and writing pornography the whole situation of Tess ratting out Dana when she attempts to run after she discovers that Rufus has not sent her letters to Kevin and the slaves beat Tess's ass is left out of the story. That was more important to me. Obviously, it wasn't more important to those who crafted the story. The art itself, like I said, it's not. It wasn't as graphic as I wanted to be. Wanted it to be. I think it was kind of watered down, and it's very liney. Like there are tons of pencil strokes, which sometimes work in favor of the art, and other times, and I just so happen to turn to a perfect example. And other times, like this frame right here, where you have Sarah, it's too much. And it it's just it's just too much. Back to the not graphic thing. Oh, I made notes and I'm still all over the place. With um, I thought maybe that it wasn't so graphic because they were attempting to water it down to make it kind of PG and not too rated R graphic. And you know that that's what they were going attempted to accomplish because when. Dana comes into contact with the brutality of slavery the first time. It's at Alice and her mother's house, and Alice's father has been pulled out butt ball naked and chained to the tree and whipped. The thought, it's, it's the, the dehumanization and the emasculation of that that comes across so well in the novel. And I'm not reading a, good, a graphic novel to see dicks and balls. That's not what I'm looking for. But I was like, okay, well, maybe they're just attempting to keep it on a PG level. Mm -mm. Not when you turn the page and Alice's mama's tits and ass is all everywhere. But if you're going to totally black out the front of her daddy, totally black out the front of her mother. It's like one is, one is it's okay to show her in such a private state, but not Alice's daddy. That may be a Tatiana issue. I got it. I'm going to stop there. All in all, it's a decent adaptation. They really put a lot of work into it, and I don't want this review to come off as I don't regret making this purchase. I will read it again, simply because this is one of my favorite novels, and to see it put to face like this, or put to the page like this in spite of everything else is still enjoyable but those are the issues that I had with it. It's, it's still a decent adaptation. I would say it's a good first try. If this was uh, a draft, uh, I don't think the pictures have done the story justice. I think that the adaptation was decent up until the point where it gets choppy. And I could come up with excuses and reasons why they made the decisions that they made 
that doesn't change the fact that my thoughts are, my, are what my thoughts are. I'm like making excuses because I don't want anybody to be offended by this because they, they put a lot of work into this. And this was done in 79. So this is almost 40 years, the source material was done in 79. So this is almost 40 years in the making of, you know, this happening. So it's not all for naught. I did enjoy the adaptation, but I did have some issues with it as well. That's all that I'm going to say because I've said a fucking lot. Whew. If you have any questions or comments that you would like to discuss, let me know in the comments below. Talk to me. I really would like to talk about this more. And that's, yeah, all that I have. Hope you all have a good week, weekend, whenever you see this video. Peace out.